Welcome back to the time of your life. I'm your host, Ethel Rasmussen. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day is commemorated each year to highlight a societal tragedy in an effort to educate the public. Here to share information about the relevance of this important day is Michelle Mills, Division Chief of Individual and Family Services at BCDA. Michelle, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Ethel. Thanks for having me today. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, known as WEAD, was launched in June 15th of 2006 by the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse and the World Health Organization at the United Nations. What is the purpose of WEAD? You know, Ethel, it's really an opportunity for communities really around the globe, around the world, to raise awareness about elder abuse. On this day, we're really able to acknowledge the significance of elder abuse, the public health issue that it is, and the human rights issue. Um, I don't think folks really understand the extent and the devastation that occurs with elder abuse. Um, and there's, it's a really cool day because there's events that are held worldwide uh, to highlight solutions, resources, how to identify elder abuse um, to this very social challenge that we face. What role does the Baltimore County Restoring Elder Safety Today, known as BC Rest, play in the annual WEAD event? So BC Rest is a coalition of agencies, organizations, and private individuals who are committed to providing education and advocacy. Our partners include representatives from the police department, um, adult protective services, the health department, ARP, ARP, uh, HANA, and the library. And then we also have our private citizens who are just passionate about raising awareness um, and trying to find resources for those uh, who are experiencing elder abuse. BC Rest, we also host our own events on June 15th to bring awareness to folks about elder abuse. Um, we try to have resources available, uh, give a presentation, just again, just trying to increase that awareness. And we've been doing this for the last 13 years. So we're very excited about that. Another project that we participate in is Protect Week. And this is a statewide awareness and public education campaign focused on protecting our older adults from financial exploitation. Um, lots of events will be scheduled. Uh, more information will be coming out um, on, the, on those events. Uh, folks can check social media, uh, check the Protect Week uh, website, uh, but we also participate in that to try to help our elders uh, just, just be aware of different financial scams, you know, different things that are happening out there. Michelle, can Michelle you share information about elder abuse and its prevalence? Yeah, it's, you know, it's estimated that one in 10 Americans 60 and over have experienced some form of elder abuse. And it can take on many different ways, uh, physical, sexual, domestic violence. I think folks forget that, um, you know, just because you're older, if you're still in a, in a, a marriage or a, a partnership, and, you know, it it's, you're older, so it's elder abuse, but it's also domestic violence and could have been occurring for quite a long time. Uh, psychological abuse, financial abuse, um, neglect, which can either be self-neglect or neglect uh, from other folks in taking care of an older adult. Unfortunately, uh, for every one case of elder abuse that's reported, 44 cases are not. Um, and that's, that's just heart-wrenching. Um, lack of community resources, isolation increased the risk of abuse. You know, these past two years uh, with the pandemic has really, really um, just put put a highlight on this. And, and a lot of our elders, as we're getting back out into the homes, back into seeing how they're doing, it's, it's really raising our awareness of how much that really led to a lot of neglect, um, but also abuse because they had no way to get out or to let people know that this is what they were experiencing. Uh, elder abuse costs survivors billions of dollars each year. This is a very expensive public health issue um, as it stands. So why is it critical to acknowledge June 15th as a way to advocate and educate on behalf of older adults? So I think, you know, it's just really imperative that we continue to increase awareness to help our folks access resources. Um, you know, we always get the question, you know, well, what can I do? Well, you can learn the signs of elder abuse and neglect. You know, you can help prevent isolation. You could ask your faith-based community to host a talk about elder abuse and, and provide resources. You can also provide a break for a caregiver. You know, just, you know, giving that caregiver, say, hey, I'll sit with your mom for a couple hours. Why don't you take, take a break? It can make a huge difference. We also have this year uh, the We Add 615 Challenge, hashtag We Add 615 Challenge. So um, what that is, is we're asking folks to learn six facts about elder abuse, uh, some of the ones I've just mentioned, 
share one thing that you can do to prevent elder abuse, and then reach out to five people um, to participate in this challenge. Uh, so look for more on our social media as we roll that out. Michelle, I understand an event for professionals will be available. Can you share information with our audience about it? Yeah, we're very excited. We're collaborating with the um, Elder Safe program through the Charles E. Smith Retirement Community. Um, and so we are hosting a webinar on elder abuse prevention and intervention through a trauma informed lens. It'll be held on June 7th from 1 to 2.30. Um, and our social work CEUs are pending. Uh, so again, more information will be coming out and we'll be sharing links on how to register. Um, I will also say we're working on a community event. Um, so more information will be coming about out about that as well. Um, which we're very excited uh, to, to be able to um, offer this year as well. So, Michelle, in closing, any final remarks regarding WEAD? Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's just really important that we aren't afraid to, to ask the questions, to uh, try to see if, if there's just something, you know, they always say, see, see something, say something. It's the same thing with elder abuse. And so we just really want to make folks, um, it's okay to ask, it's okay to question. Um, I think our older adults would appreciate that, um, knowing that somebody's caring for them and maybe even if there's nothing happening, at least you cared enough to ask. Um, but if you need um, you know, more information, um, you can call our office at 410-887-4200. But if you really truly feel like there's an older adult in Baltimore County who is a victim of elder abuse or experiencing elder abuse, uh, please call 410-887-8463. And that's our Adult Protective Services Department. And they'd be happy to take your information and check things out. Thank you, Michelle, for being on the show today. Thank you for having us, and thank you for letting us bring awareness to elder abuse. Thank you. Before we take a short break, on behalf of Baltimore County Department of Aging, thank you to our sponsors of Sounds for a Brighter Day concert on May 19th from 11 to 2 p.m. at the Oregon Ridge Park Concert Pavilion. Sponsorship supports make this special day possible and has allowed us to honor Baltimore County and City RSVP volunteers. Thank you to Baltimore City Government, Division of Aging for the Community Resources 2023 Sponsorship, Keswick Wise and Well, the Entertainment Sponsor, ARP Maryland, the RSVP Gift Sponsor, Levendale Hospital, the Dessert Sponsor. The event's business sponsors include Avila Home Care, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Charlotte Hall Veterans Home. The event's activity sponsors include Brightview Senior Living, GBMC Healthcare, Gilcrest Hospice Care, Maryland Vascular Specialist, and the Wesley at Home. The event level sponsors include Kaiser Permanente, Mid-Atlantic Medical Supply and Equipment, and PG Builders, Inc.